Okay, good morning, everybody. It is nine o'clock. We'll go ahead and get started. I am recording this so we can share it with you later if you weren't able to attend or if you wanted to go back and review some of the slides. Uh, good morning, my name is Charlotte and I'm gonna be giving you the live briefing today. Uh, we're gonna be talking about our first winter storm of the season and the impacts that we're expecting over the weekend coming up. Sure, it's advancing, okay. So some key points and kind of the bottom line up front, we have winter has arrived. We're gonna have several rounds of snow for the, across the entire Eastern uh, Washington and North Idaho today through Sunday, followed by a warmer storm system Sunday through next week, bringing periods of rain and high mountain snow. And so we will have concerns for potential flooding. And during this snow event, we will have very heavy snow over the Cascade mountain passes, as well as the Idaho mountains. So we'll go into many of those details here. So starting out with the total precipita precipitation accumulation over the next several days, um, you look over the entire state of Washington, there's a lot of the very bright orange and yellow colors, and that's up to 10 to over 15 inches of liquid precipitation. So this takes into account that snowfall liquid. And so we're gonna be seeing inches of precipitation measured in the Idaho Panhandle and the Cascade Crest. We will have several rounds of precipitation today through next Wednesday, some form of snow, and then it'll transition into rain. And um, we will talk about some of those impacts. So most, most places will start to see rain late in the weekend. It'll transition to rain as we move into early next week. But first we have snow. And so there's a lot on this chart and I won't read every location, every box, but you can go ahead and look for your area. And again, we'll send out these slides and the recording later, but we're gonna be starting off with snow later today, this evening through for many of the locations. And as we move into Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we will start to see those heavier snowfall accumulations impacting the Cascade Mountains and the Idaho Panhandle um, mountain areas, and that's where we've highlighted a moderate or a major risk because of the amount of snowfall and the expected impacts to travel, especially for those locations. But we will have snowfall for the lower elevations that will impact commute times, and we'll start to see those accumulations tonight, more so into Friday and Saturday, and then by Sunday we're tapering off. And then you take a look into early next week, those snow will begin to transition to rain and we'll start to see potential concerns for flooding. So talking, let's break it down a little bit by timing and day and what we're talking about. So we will see two rounds of snow with a very short break in between systems. So for today, Thursday, we will start to see mostly light snowfall amounts. Uh, we're expecting snow in the mountains to start earlier in the day and then for the lowlands, the basin, Spokane, Coeur d'Alene, up into Idaho later tonight. And then for Friday, our amounts will start to increase a little bit. We'll have light to moderate amounts for snowfall. And Friday, we could see that snowfall impacting the Friday morning and the Friday evening commutes. That's when we'll start to see that snowfall accumulation. Um, and then the Cascade Passes will begin to accumulate the very heavy snowfall. And there's times where we could see up to an inch or more per hour, um, but through a lot of the day Friday into part of Saturday, we'll start to see quite a bit of heavy snow. So our confidence is pretty high, moderate to high for this event. We've seen it evolving over the last couple of days and it's just coming into better agreement. So for snowfall amounts for the first two portions of this storm, on the left is Thursday night through Friday morning, so you can see the mountains are starting to accumulate up to four to six inches. The basin area will start to see those accumulations later tonight. So it could be during or just after that evening commute time through the overnight hours and into early Friday morning. And then on the right-hand side, you have the Friday morning through Friday evening snowfall totals. And that's where we're starting. This is all during the whole day Friday. You're seeing um, 12 to 18 inches up by Snoqualmie and Stevens Pass and the Cascade Crest. And so that's the time where we could see an inch per hour accumulations during the day Friday through the evening. And then you move east across the basin, we're expecting up to two inches of snow, and this will move through that Friday evening commute time. And then the Idaho mountains are gonna see additional snowfall. 
So our next round will be Friday night through Saturday. So the snowfall amounts will begin to taper off for the lowland areas, but we will still see those accumulating uh, moderate amounts in the mountains, both Cascades and Idaho mountains. And most of that snow will be north of Highway 2 across the central part of Washington and Idaho. And our confidence is a little bit lower with this just because of the uncertainty for where exactly the storm system could move because it has been showing some signs of shifting here and there. And so as we know with any winter storm system, the slightest movement can mean a difference in snowfall amounts for various locations. So this storm total map is, it's a, yeah, it's a storm total snowfall map. So this encompasses Friday morning through Sunday evening when we have the most of the snowfall accumulating. So there's a really high amounts in the Cascade Mountains, similarly high mountains in the Idaho Mountains along the Montana state border. Um, and the basin areas, this is, like I said, this is a storm total snowfall forecast. We um, are expecting this much snowfall before it transitions to rainfall later in the week, later in the weekend into early next week. And so for those Cascade Mountain Pass areas, we are looking for snowfall in the form of feet measurements. Um, and you can see there's some Cascade Slope Valley areas that are starting to see fairly decent amounts, the Metow Valley up to six inches, Wenatchee and up Highway 2 could start to see up to four to six inches as well. So now for some probabilities for different snowfall totals, we'll start off giving the percent chance for two inches or more of snow. And you can see for these lowland areas, we're starting to see some pretty decent probabilities for snowfall. If we move to six inches, so a lot of the basin now should see less than six inches because there's no probability there. But you're seeing Coeur d'Alene, Sandpoint, uh, Bonners Ferry, 30 to 50% chance for at least six inches of snow. Bonners Ferry, a little bit less chance, but it's not a zero chance to see at least six inches of snow. And then if we move to 12 inches of snow now, we're really kind of buttoning up the mountains that are gonna see the heavier snowfall amounts. Um, you can see the Metow Valley is not quite up to 10% chance. It's, you know, it's got lower percent chances, but um, some of the mountains have the higher percentages and then more than 18 inches. Obviously this, I, you saw the storm total snowfall graphic back with the Cascade Mountains seeing several feet of snow. So over 18 inches of snow is pretty much expected. So addition to the snowfall, we will start to see um, wind increase on Saturday as we transition in between two of the weather systems. Um, and we start to see some warm up. So Saturday, we will see increasing southwest winds, south to southwest winds, especially across the basin area. So from the south central part of Washington to Washington into the basin, Moses Lake, Ritzville, the Palouse, we will see gusts up to 30 to 40 miles per hour. Some areas could see as high as 45 miles per hour. And our low confidence, but concern that we are looking at right now is the blowing and drifting snow potential for the Palouse. And this will be really relying on the timing of the colder temperatures before they warm up when we'll have snow falling and the cold temperatures and the wind when we could see that blowing and drifting snow. So for those north-south uh, travel corridors in the Palouse area in both Washington and Idaho, those locations could see potential for blowing and drifting snow on Saturday. And then as we look into more of the extended Sunday through next Wednesday, we do have a lot more moisture that arrives with additional uh, weather systems moving through. We will see lowlands warming up. So our temperatures will warm up into the 40s and 50s. And we will start to see uh, melting of the low elevation snow as well as our snow levels rising. So the precipitation that falls will likely all be in the form of rain. And so that will aid in melting any of the lowland snow. So we do have concerns for increased rises on the rivers and streams with some flooding potential in some of the areas that we had pointed out, like Paradise Creek, the Palouse River, and any urban areas that have received a lot of snow and a lot of rain with poor drainage. Um, obviously flooding is a concern there. And there's still a lot of uncertainty with this next week, but it's 
been a signal that we've been looking at, and so we wanted to mention it because it still is a concern. And to summarize, um, so we do have a lot of winter travel conditions that will be arriving this weekend and persist through a lot of the weekend. So there's a lot of activities going on. So we want you to be aware of the winter travel conditions. Travel over the passes will likely be extremely challenging. So keep in touch with uh, Washington DOT, Idaho DOT for any past conditions, any um, current travel conditions. And then, like I said, next week, we do have a wet and warmer pattern shifting and we do have concerns with the potential flooding and the river stream rises. I did throw on our weather.gov uh, winter page and that will have our up-to-date winter weather, uh, storm total snow graphics, our probability graphics that I showed. It will, um, if you scroll down to the bottom, it does have that chart for all the different locations. So you can pinpoint and figure out what the percentage chance for specific snowfall for your location is on that page. And oh, it's not showing. Um, not showing the last slide that Andy had added in. So, oh I'm, no. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure why it's doing that. That's um, weird. Uh, the last slide that I had added uh, is just a reminder that we are going to be communicating uh, all through this event through Slack. So uh, be sure to sign in. There it is. There it is. Uh, be sure to sign in with Slack and uh, get on the right page so you can communicate with us. We're already seeing some great communication between our media partners and transportation. And so as those impacts start to stack up over the weekend, uh, it's just such a great resource to have the ability to talk to the forecasters 24 seven, ask questions, uh, share pictures. It's a really great tool. So if you have any questions about that, uh, the two contacts are myself, andrew.brown at noaa.gov or Valerie, I think she is on leave this uh, Thursday and Friday, but uh, either one of us will be able to help you uh, answer those questions. Um, and the only other thing I was gonna mention about this storm system is there's still some uncertainty. Uh, at this time, we're not planning on any additional special weather briefings, but we will uh, continue to send out our, you know, at least daily uh, weather briefings by email. Um, and I'm glad that Shar shared that uh, the webpage, the winter webpage, that's where a lot of those graphics come from. So be sure to check those on your own time and uh, you'll be able to kind of brief yourself on what's happening, uh, what's expected to happen over the next couple of days. So with that, I don't see any questions in the queue, but um, if anybody has any questions, put that down there, let us know, and uh, we'll stand by for a few seconds. Yeah, and I did um, try and unmute everybody. Or so I should have given you the privilege to unmute yourself. If you do have a question, feel free to up. Hi, um, I do. I was yeah. kind of dumb and didn't get Charlotte's last name. Oh. Undoubtedly was up in the corner and I just didn't get it. No, that's okay. Uh, it's Charlotte Dewey. D-E-W-E-Y? Yes. Okay. And you're a meteorologist? Yes. Okay. Um... So most of the flooding, the potential for flooding is going to be in the Washington, Idaho border area. Is that correct? Yes, that's the, some of the okay. rivers and streams that we're more concerned with right now. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so good question. Um, so the one inch per hour snowfall accumulations are predominantly going to be in the Cascade Crest area. We will have, um, it's, it's, yeah, it's predominantly in the Cascade Crest area from uh, north of Stevens Pass, so Chelan County, extending south through um, the rest of the Cascades in uh, Washington. And like I said, for most of the day Friday, it'll start those chances for an inch per hour will start early to midday Friday and then off and on uh, periods throughout the day Saturday. And then there'll be periods Saturday where it could be a little bit stronger. It could be um, one and a half to two inches per hour for a little bit of time. But yeah, it's predominantly in the Cascade Crest. Um, there's a couple locations in uh, Shoshone County, the mountains, 
um, south of I-90 where they could see uh, like a 20% chance of an inch per hour for periods on Saturday, but it won't be, the duration won't be as long as the Cascades will see. Good question. Anyone else with any questions? Uh, like Andy said, we don't have any other live briefings scheduled, but we will send out our uh, partner email briefing. Did you remember to record this, Shari? I did. Awesome. Yeah, so we'll send out a recording as well. Uh, we have about 20 folks on here to join us. And uh, yeah, we'll send out these slides and uh, the recording. And uh, please don't hesitate to reach out. Um, a lot going on and some things could change over the next couple of days. So stay tuned. It's gonna be interesting first uh, big. Any other questions for us? Cameron. Okay, yeah, thank you. Oh yeah, no problem, Cameron. All right, not seeing any. Great job, Shar. Thank you so much for uh, joining everybody. Yeah, thank you. You guys have a great day.